Once you learn who the father says you are, you will have to unlearn who religion told you to be. You don't have to have put any effort into being who you are, but you have to put a lot of effort to do the things you're told to be. It is his image and likeness versus being born separated from him in sin and headed for hell. Another Don Keithley quote. So religion used the fear of a pagan hell to compel us, while the father designed the love of Christ to compel us. No wonder religion has not impacted our culture and people have rejected that notion of a God who would send his children to be punished and tormented forever in hell. And that is that whole thing has been deconstructed for me. So I know that the old version of hell where people are punished and tormented for does not exist. But people do go to a place if they have not accepted Jesus and know the father in which the love of the father continually consumes their lives in the, all the hindrances and objections that are stopping them coming into the knowledge of the truth. Now, I have a testimony of this that I've never done before, um, but it was a powerful example of what we can do if we're mandated by God. Now, I went to a, um, not a funeral, but it was a celebration of life to the husband of one of Debbie's school friends. And we had been meeting every few months, uh, you know, three or four times a year, I think. Um, and I got to know the husbands of the wives of Debbie's school friends. Um, and we got to know each other. And one of them, we have great conversations. And I've introduced him to the Grace Awakening Network. And he's really embracing this whole teaching. The other guy basically was not interested at all. And I, I, I just felt he was very resistant to anything about God, whatever. But he was a nice guy. Uh, we, we chatted and different things. But we met at the end of uh, April this year in June. His wife said that he had been diagnosed and in July he died, which was quite a shock for him, the family and for the friends. Um, so we went to his celebration of life and the celebration of life was held um, in a in a sort of uh, restaurant -y type place. Um, and there were a couple of vicars there, but they didn't speak and a lady who was his friend, a work friend, she coordinated and hosted it. And there was various music and testimonies of his life and his children and other people sharing, which was great. And there were some songs that are sung. But I felt sad in that his family and friends had no hope for his future. So they never mentioned where he is or anything like that because they had no hope of him actually even having a life after death and he didn't believe in a life after death and he was quite anti-organized religion as it was quoted so i sat there feeling quite sad so i thought okay god what can i do and and god i felt god say well you know what to do and i thought um okay but can i so i really felt god's compassion i felt compassion to go and engage so i went into the fire the fiery place, the place of God's love, the consuming fire of God's love. And I called for this guy to come out and he came forth and I shared the good news with him of God's love, that God loves never fails, that God still loves him. It didn't matter whether he he chose to reject God, God never rejected him. That even though his cultural understanding now is that there is life under death, but that for him is hell and eternal conscious torment effectively because that's what culture believes i shared that good news that this was only a place that he was there because he hadn't yet accepted jesus and that he could now accept jesus and enter into a relationship with the father and wonderfully he accepted that and he followed me out of that place we went back to the father and I introduced him to the father and the father hugged him, gave him new clothes, clothed him with his true identity in that relationship, gave him a new ring of sonship and embraced him. And it was wonderful. Now, that's not necromancy. He's not dead. His soul's alive. No one dies. They just die physically. Spirit and soul are still alive. Now, his spirit and soul were then reunited as God hugged him, he became whole. And now he is going on to have a relationship with the father in which God will reveal his sonship. And he can now rediscover his origin 
and his true identity in who he is in God. And this is what is possible. Death is not the end of choice. Death is just the opportunity to go to a different place to choose. And God will never give up and his love never fails. And that is the power of the love of God. And that is the power of the good news. It's the love of Christ that compels us, not fear of hell. This is an excerpt from Mike's current teaching series, Restoring First Love. Get the full-length videos every month only at eg.freedomark.org slash first-love.